Hi class, let's go over the questions on the help board. So there's not tons on here. Hopefully you didn't quit doing your homework. Please upload your homework onto the Google Classroom. If it's not working, you can email me your papers. So I am going to hide myself because there's no sense being on here. Maybe I can't. There we go. Okay. So we are going to start with lesson 106. We'll start with number eight. Chad, did you just sneak that one on there? You did. Okay. I did all the problems earlier and this was not on there, but I'll do this one for you. Okay. <clears throat> so number eight is a triangle. See if I can draw a triangle. I'm just going to be right in here. Um, we have sides. So the sides are 3, M, and N, and 45 degrees. All right, so we are supposed to find M and, M and N. So if it's 45, 45, 90 triangle, then we know that M and N are the same. So we can mark those as the same. What are they? Well, and if you draw the sample triangle for 45, 45, 90 triangle, it's going to look like this. Um, it's going to look like this. This is a similar triangle with a, um, this is 45 degrees. This is 90. This is 90. So this one's going to be um, 1, 1 square root of 2. So to get from the, we could do a ratio. Let's just do the ratio. So we do three over the square root of two. Similar triangles have proportional sides. And then it's going to be M over one. And so we would get M equals three over the square root of two. And then you would rationalize. And you would get three root two over two. So that would be M and N. They're both the same. So it would be three square root of two over two. Okay, the second part of it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let me try to draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This video may come in two parts if I can't get it done in the time that I have allotted for it. So let's see what I can do. So this is a 90 degree angle. We have P, Q, 7, this is 30 degrees. You have to memorize the 30, 60, 90 triangles. I'm going to draw this one the same way so that we can compare them. So if it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you have to memorize that it's, if you have a 30, I know this doesn't look like a 30, um, it's one across from the 30. Across from the 90 is going to be a two, and this is going to be the square root of three. So this is 60. So we're just going to do our, um, P over root 3 equals 7 over 1. And so P would equal 7 root 3. So that's this one. And then you can find Q. Q is pretty easy. You just take whatever is opposite the 30 and take it times 2. And so we would get Q equals 14. Or you could do another ratio. You should, could say 7 over 1 equals what over 2? and you get x equals 14. So either way, you get x equals 14. All right, number 10. Chad, I don't know if I'm going to get to all the ones you put up there at the last minute, but we'll see. Okay, so number 10, it is 4.1026. You have to write this as a rational number. So it's two places we're going to have to move this over. So we're going to say 100 times this is going to be equal to our n, right? So 100 times n would move the decimal point over two places. So it would be like this, and then we write this out a couple times. So I don't have this one done ahead of time. So then we're going to subtract from it n, which is 4.102626. We subtract, we get 99. You, you determine the number of zeros by how many places it's over. And then when we subtract this, my calculator actually has dead batteries right now. So you subtract this and get an answer, and then you divide by 99. And if there's a decimal, you need to move it over. I'm doing another one of these later, so hold on. You'll get to see the whole thing then. Okay, and number 14 was the kind that I hate to do, but I'm doing them for you, Ashley. So 14 is 3 over 5x 
minus one over four y equals five, and then it's 0 0.012x plus 0 0.07y equals 2.20. So on these problems, you want to get rid of your fractions first. We're going to multiply everything by 20 to get rid of our fractions. So 5 goes into 20 four times. 4 times 3 is 12. Um, 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 1 is 5y. You're probably just looking for a mistake that you made. So now I'm going to multiply this one by, move it over three places, so it's going to be 12x. I'm actually going to multiply by negative 2 when I move them all over. I'm going to multiply those all by a negative number. So this is going to be a negative 70, if I move it over two places and change the sign, equals a negative 220. So I moved it over two places and I took everything by negative 1. And we get negative 75y equals negative 2100 and y equals 28. That's 14. Number 16, let's see what that one is. That's one I didn't do ahead of time. So of course you can rewind these, do whatever you want so that you can see them. Okay, number 16, I'm gonna do one like this a little bit later, Chad, so just hold on for that one. And number 18, Zeke has some questions on the new type of factoring problems. So yeah, these are factoring, these are actually equations. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure it's in descending order of variable and that it's set equal to zero. So we're gonna factor this. These are the new kind of factoring. You say what times what gives you three x squared, so it's three x times x. What times what gives you two. Um, but they have to go in the right spots. You just can't put them anywhere. And you can tell by doing the outer and the inner. So if I put the two here and the one here, and I do the outer, I'm gonna get six x. And I, if I do the inner, I get one x. And that's not gonna subtract to give me one x. So that one's wrong. So let's fix it up. Let's switch them around. You need a pencil to do these because you're going to need to try them a couple of times. We do the outer, we get three x. In the inner, we get two x. And if we subtract them, we do get one. We need the bigger number to be positive, so we need this one to be positive, so that we get a positive three and a negative two x, and there you go. It's not done yet, we're trying to solve for x. So we set each of the factors equal to zero. And we get x plus one equals zero, and we get x equals two thirds, and x equals negative one. So that's the first one. Next one has a little twist, 28. 28 is 33, I'm gonna put them in order. When I write them down, let's put them in descending order of variables. So 6p cubed plus 33p squared plus 45p equals zero. We're gonna take a p out, so we're gonna get, oops, we can take a 3p, because three goes into each of those. So let's take out a 3p, and we're left with 2p squared plus 11p plus 15 equals zero. Leave the 3p out there. We're going to get three answers because we have an exponent of a three. Three solutions, three roots, three zeros, three x-intercepts. All right, so we're going to get 2p and p, and then we have 15. Let's put the five here and the three here, see what we get. Outer is 10 and inner is three. That does not work, so we're going to switch them around. So we need to put the um, three here and the five here. If I do my outer, I'm gonna get 6p, inner is 11p, we're gonna add them so they're both plus. This last sign is positive, which means they're going to be the same, the same as this one. Now we have three factors we set equal to zero. Each one of these factors, we're gonna get three solutions like this, and we solve them, we get p equals zero, p equals negative five halves, and p equals negative three. And for the last one, number 30. So we have to put these, this one, I'm just gonna write it down as it is in the book. You want to put everything on one side. I would keep the a squared term positive, so I'm gonna move two a squared over here. Minus 11a plus 15 equals zero. Factor, so we get two a and a, and then we have, with the guess, I'm gonna do five and Three, what's that gonna give us? 10 and three does not equal 11. So that one's wrong. So here we go again. We're going to switch them around. So let's do, I forget which way I had it the first time, but let's do three and five. 
Outer is six, inner is five. We wanna add them together to get to 11. They're both gonna be negative. The last sign's positive. That means they're gonna be the same. They're both gonna be negative. So we're gonna get A equals five halves. If I set them equal to zero, A equals three. All right, that's it for 107. Let's move on to 106. Let's move on to 107. Okay, so lesson 107. Number one, um, this is a mixture problem. So we have the buckets, the buckets and the buckets equal the bucket. So the mixture was, loose. Lynn's mixture was 30% formaldehyde. Lucy's was 60 and we wanna get one that was 36. We don't know how much Lynn had. We don't know how much Lucy had, but we know the total amount putting them together is 400. Now we have two variables, we need two equations. One is not with value, it's just with how many milliliters are in the buckets. The other one we multiply the percent times the amount in the bucket. We don't use a decimal because we moved all of them over two places. And then we would simply solve this. I would just let you do this from here, but I think it's pretty cool what you can do. Um, this one, if we divided everything by 30, even this one, it's multiplied together, we're gonna to be able to reduce this to x plus 2y equals 480. So it's good if you can recognize something like that. Now I'm gonna multiply this one by negative one, and we get this. And when we solve this, I think you can take it from here, we get y equals 280, and it's gonna be, oops, it's gonna be 80 not 280. So we're gonna get 80 milliliters and then it means that's of the 60% and then we can figure out the 30% would be our X. It's 320 is the 30% milliliters. Don't forget to put that on there's your 30%. Okay, number three, two people asked for this one, popular. All right, so the sum of the digits of a two digit counting number was 15, okay. So we have the tens place and the units place add up to 15. So if we just have a number TU, it's going to equal, it's going to be some number. Whatever's in this position, like if we have the number 32, this is worth 3 times 10, and this is just worth um, 2 times 1, the place. So this number is really going to be 10, the original number is 10 times the tens digit, whatever the tens digit plus the unit digit, that's the original number. If we reverse the digits and the U is before the T, the U is now, if we switch the numbers and made it 23, now we would take 10 times the, the unit digits. So the switch number is 10 times the unit plus the tens equals the new number. Now we just read along the problem. Wherever it says original, we put the, this one. And if it says new, we put this one. So it says the sum of the two digits counting number was 15. That's this equation here. If the digits were reversed, the new number, so I'm gonna pick the new number, was nine greater than the original number, which was 10, 10 T plus U, and it was nine greater. So I have to add nine on the lesser side to keep it balanced. And then from here, we're just going to subtract the U and get nine U minus nine T, equals nine, and then I would just divide everything by nine, and we get this nice equation. Um, we're gonna take um, this one up here. I'm just gonna switch the digits around. U plus T equals 15. This works beautifully. These add out, you get two U equals 16. And the unit digits is digit is eight, which means the tens digit is seven. So our number is 78. All that work to get 78. All right, number five. Number five I decided to skip because uh, it's just a really strange problem. They have selling price twice. I hope you never see anything like that again. So I'm skipping that one. Um, number seven. Seven, oh man, these take a little bit of time to do. And it depends what variable you eliminated if this is even going to help you. But I'm gonna try. Five X minus Y minus Z. Just checking the time, um, equals two, x minus five y plus z equals negative two, negative x plus y 
minus z equals negative two. I hope you can see that the best number to eliminate here are the z's because there's no coefficients. So if we just add these first two together, we're gonna get six x minus six y equals zero. I just added these together. Now I can divide everything by six to make this less complicated. So x minus y equals zero. So that's a and b added together. Now I'm going to take, this should be a minus z, which makes our problem way easier, right? So I'm gonna add these two together now. So the x's add out, the z's add out, and I get negative four y equals, um, 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 should be negative, let's see, what did I do wrong here? Um, do I have to multiply it by anything? No, oh, I have to add these together, so negative four. So we get y equals one. So we have y equals one, we go back into this equation and we're going to get x equals one. And then we take these two back into this equation and we get z equals two. I think it's two. There you go. So you write your ordered pair one, one, two. Seven, number, let's see, we did seven, we are on 15. All right, 15. So, oh, this is a tricky one. All right, 15. It's x squared plus y squared equals four. X minus two y equals one. So we get x equals one plus two y. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it back up here where the x is and we get one plus two y squared plus y squared equals four. So I plug that back in. We're gonna FOIL this using a mature way. You square the first one, multiply these two together, take it times two. So it's gonna be plus four y. Um, let's see, I did this totally different when I did it on my paper. So we get four y squared plus y squared equals four. Add the y squareds together, you get five y squared. I'm gonna put it in order, um, plus four y. Let me just cross out what I used, and then I'm gonna subtract the four, and I'm going to get minus three equals zero. I don't have much room in here, I can't move my screen. Um, so we're gonna put this in the quadratic formula. I'm gonna erase this, just keep that in mind with the equations, I'm gonna rewrite it. It is five y squared plus four y um, minus three, equals zero. Put in the quadratic formula. So we get x equals negative b, so it's negative four. It's actually y equals, and it's kind of important that we remember that. All right, so we get y equals negative four plus or minus four squared, which will be 16, minus four times a times c all over two times a, which is two times five. Obviously, I'm going really fast right now. So hopefully you rewind it and try to watch it again when, um, when you can Maybe just put it in slow motion or something. So this is gonna be the square root of 76 over 10. And the square root of 76 can be simplified into two root, it would be four times 19 is 76, so it's two root 19 over 10. And then we're gonna divide everything by two. So y is going to be negative two plus or minus root 19 over five. Now to find x, you have to put it in this equation, x equals two times y plus one. So we're gonna take two times this and add one to it, all right, to get x. So two times this would be negative four um, plus or minus two root 19 over five, and then we're gonna add one, we'll just call it a five fives, all right? Um, then we're gonna get x equals, so this is negative four fifths right here. So it's gonna be one fifth plus or minus two root 19 over five. Not a simple problem, lots of steps involved. So once you get y, you have to put it back in for y, take it times two, then add one to it and you'll get your x. And then you can write that as an ordered pair. All right, so the last one is, was that 15? Now we have to do 25. Okay, 25. All right, number 25, we have two shapes. We have a rectangle, which is 10 and five, and we have a triangle, which is 10. We know the 
the areas are equal. So the area of this is going to be 50. And an area of a triangle is one half base times height. We don't know the height, we have the base and we have the area. So we're going to replace the A with 50 equals one half. The base is 10 times the height. We don't know. This is going to be five. So the height is going to be 10. That's one of the problems. It's in meters. So we'd say 10 meters. Um, we need to know the length of FG. Well, if this is 10, the height is 10. We do the Pythagorean theorem, so 10 squared plus 10 squared equals um, c squared, so it's going to be 200 equals c squared. c equals the square root of 200, which ends up being 10 root 2 meters is the side. This, that, they are both meters, not squared. All right, last, next lesson, 108. All right, 108, we have A, 4, and 22, that's it. Where did all the problems go? A, factor. So we're in lesson 108, we are on A, so 64P to the sixth, A to the ninth, minus X cubed, Y to the twelfth. Figure out U and V, which is the cube root of 64. Four times four times four is 64. Just divide these variables by three, and you'll know what, what it is. There we go, V is going to be, um, divide that by three is X, divide that by three, it's gonna be four. You put it in your equation, U minus V equals U squared plus UV, which you have to memorize. And you plug it in, everywhere you see a U, you put a four P squared A cubed, everywhere you see a V, you put X, Y to the fourth. U squared would be 16 P to the fourth, A to the sixth, um, plus these two multiplied together. So it's four P squared A cubed X Y to the fourth. And then the last one squared, which would be X squared Y to the eighth. And that's your answer. It's just plugging in the formula, finding your U, finding your V, putting it in the appropriate formula. If it's minus, it starts minus. This is opposite. This is always positive. Same, opposite, always positive, spells soap. Okay, the next one, um, number four. Or says uh, yellows vary directly as greens. So we directly as green squared and inversely as blues. So it looks like that. Um, so we just fill in what they say. Yellows, when there were 100 yellows, we don't know K. I'm doing it this, I'm just doing it the one way. Green squared, there's one green squared over five blues. So we solve that, we get K equals 500. We pop that back up here. It says how many blues went with 10 yellows and 10 greens. So 10 greens, our K is 500. And we're gonna divide that by blue. So we're gonna get 10 B equals whatever. Let's see, I wrote these answers down somewhere so I wouldn't have to use a calculator when I did these. Um, so we're gonna get B equals this is gonna be, you know, times, I did this all on the calculator. And we would get, um, you know, we get five, one, two, three, four. And so we get B equals 5,000, you don't really need a calculator. Okay, that is that one. And the last one is 22. 22, oh, you guys forget this kind? Okay, 22 is we have four R, minus 14u. So u kind of plot it just to see where it's gonna be, y and x. It's gonna go four this way, and then 14 down this way. All right, so we're gonna make our triangle. This is four, this is 14. 14, not 10. You do the Pythagorean theorem on this, and you would get four squared plus 14 squared, and then take the square root of it. And if you put in your calculator, you get 14.56 when you do the Pythagorean theorem here, but the book does the um, radical. It does square root of 212. I don't know if it tells you anywhere that you should do that. I don't think it does. You could just use the decimal, which simplifies to two root 53. So if you did four squared plus 14 squared equals C squared, and then take the square root of both sides, you get square root of 212, and this simplifies. Now you wanna find this angle for polar form. So you'd say the inverse tangent equals opposite, which is 14 over four. 
you pop that in your calculator and you get um, negative 74.05. Um, and then you just write it in polar form. 2, 2 root 53, trying to rush, at negative 74.05 degrees. I actually subtracted from 360 and got 285.95 degrees. Okay, that's it for that lesson. Let's head down to, to 109. Let me just scroll this up a minute and see if there's anything else hiding down there. Okay, there is some sneaky problems on there. Okay, so 109, we have A. Let me see if I did that one ahead of time, Chad. Um, yes, expand. You had that on there, good job. Okay, so A is m to the one half plus a to the one half squared. So you do not multiply these exponents. This means m to the one half plus a to the one half times m to the one half plus a to the one half. And then you FOIL. When you FOIL, you add exponents. So if it was x times x, you would get um, x squared. We're adding our exponents. So it's going to be um, one, one half plus one half is one. Your outer and your inner, if you did the mature way, you just multiply these together times two. M to the one half, A to the one half. Or if you do your outer, it's gonna be M to the one half, A to the one half, plus A to the one half, M to the one half, which is two. And then we're gonna add our exponents. When you say, like if I had X squared times X to the third, we add our exponents, right? So we're adding one half and one half and we just get A. Okay, 11. Right, number 11. So we are going to show, this is the one I was talking about, Chad, that um, we're going to write this as a fraction. So this is gonna equal N. It's covering two of the numbers, so we're gonna multiply 100 times N, which we're gonna get 102.342. Just carry it out a few places. We're going to subtract n, which is 1.0. Oops, I didn't line that decimal up very well. Two, three, and eventually they should line up. These all get crossed out like that. We get 99n equals um, 101.342. And then we divide by 99, like such. You don't leave a decimal in a fraction, so you need to move this over one, two, three places and add three zeros. And so your answer is 101,342 over 99,000. And our last problem is number 15. Oh, another one of these fun ones, guys. Okay, let's end it with fun. Okay, 15 is x minus 2y equals 5, xy equals 3. Solve it for x, x equals 2y plus 5. And so we're going to plug this in for that x. So we get 2y plus 5. This one's actually easier than the first one we did like this. Then we multiply it through 2y squared plus 5y. I'm going to bring the 3, set it equal to 0 because it's quadratic. It's factorable. Yay for that. You know, if, it, if you don't know, just use the quadratic formula. So we can get three and one. So we get a plus and a minus. And so we get y equals one half, y equals negative three. And then you have to put them back up here to get x. So you would do um, x times one half equals three and we get x equals six. And if we put the negative three in there, we get y equals mm, negative one. And so you write them as an ordered pair. Um, and then that would be it. All right, well, I gotta go. Got it all in in 30 minutes today. Yay for that. All right, so we'll see you all in class tomorrow at 8, 8 o'clock a.m.